So good evening, thank you. This is very exciting because this is the first official talk about the Women and Children's Health MSc, which is new for 2018. And so this is, um, it's good to talk to people about it. So what we're going to talk about is I'm going to introduce you to new MSc and what the strategy is behind it and what we're looking for and what we can offer students. I'm going to cover the key topics that we're going to offer during our MSc and then do a, a little introduction to the department and the lecturers that would be undertaking the MSc. Unlike many of the talks you may have seen, I've got pictures here of St Thomas's Hospital because this MSc will be based at that campus, not here. It's just down the road and you can get an inter-shuttle bus from Guy's to St Thomas's. So we're based here on the 10th floor in the Women's Health and we have lovely views over Westminster and a lovely garden that you can have lunch in. And so the women's health teaching will be mainly in this block, but we also have the Evelina Children's Hospital where our paediatric, paediatrics colleagues live. And so we're very close together. And we have just joined together in, in a new department, the Department of Women and Children's Health. And it's very timely because we want to try and integrate all our research. A lot of pregnancy research and women's health research stops at the baby. We don't care what happens after that and the paediatrics pick it up and we think we're really missing a trick by not integrating those subjects. So that's really what we're aiming to do. As a way of background to myself, I am a, a scientist by training. I've been in women's health since about 2000 and my research group spans the translational pathway. So I investigate everything from cells and molecules, how the uterus works, to implementing screening tests for preterm birth in rural India. So it's a multidisciplinary approach that we take. Scientists can do clinical research and, sci and clinicians can do scientific research and what we're trying to do is integrate the two. So what does women's health encompass more than just this little baby? So we do research spanning from the preconception in women, preconception health, and we follow it all the way through pregnancy and out the other side and how pregnancy impacts on child health and adult health. We cover a multitude of disease states so we can interest cardiovascular biologists, people interested in diabetes, nutrition, exercise, diet, a whole range of topics. We're trying to understand what happens preconceptually in terms of the woman, what, what's altering her health at that point and what happens in pregnancy that affects the baby and why that can have long-term effects. And really what it is, is understanding the journey through life in order to improve health for all. We're not just all about women, we're about male offspring too, and the dads and the granddads. So we're, as I said, we're following through from pre-pregnancy to pregnancy and watching what happens to health through life. And we're not just restricted to that one cycle, we're also interested in what happened to your grandmother because we know that grandmother's health could impact on her daughter's laying down of eggs and how that may affect the future offspring. So we're looking at the developmental origins of health and also the, the, the father of this child also brings something to that pregnancy and can also affect the baby. So we're trying to look at that all very holistically so that we can improve outcomes for women and children, not only here, but globally. So we have a lot of global health projects too. So trying to put all these topics together and tell people what we are going to offer them in the MSc is quite difficult. I tried to do this word, word cloud and some of the words got missed out, so if your favourite word's not there, I'm sure that we still research it. And it's just to show you the, the, the breadth of what we do. So we can go from IVF, we can look at hypertension, we look at the babies, we look at the women, we look at the fathers, we look at respiratory health, we look at asthma, we look at physiology, we look at policy, how genes may affect the baby, all sorts of things. And that's why it's, it's, it, it offers people who do this MSc an option to tailor, come in, find the area that interests them and tailor their MSc for their own benefit. We are, we are still fighting the fact that people work in silos and we're lacking creativity. People get stuck with their own ideas and they're not challenged. And we want to try and bring in people to challenge everybody's thinking. And we can only do that by making it interdisciplinary. We've got the doctors and the midwives and the clinical trialists here who we work with. 
We have scientists like myself who can work from cells to tissues to experimental models to big data to mathematical mo modelling and imaging, but they're working separately. We have the allied health professionals, the nutritionists, the dietitians, social scientists and public health people who have skill sets we want in our discipline. And then we get on to neonatologists, paediatrics, doctors, nurses and GPs, all who are having some influence on women and children's health, but we're not talking to each other. So the idea is we're going to knock down these silos and integrate people. We want to integrate them with the people who are doing global health, because the biggest burden of disease in women and children's health is out there in India and Africa. We need that expertise. I put them in the little truck there because I know they're going travelling everywhere. We want to integrate blue sky thinkers into our field to really move the field on. We want the innovators that develop medical devices. We want bioengineers that can help us. And we want the people who can inform health policy, implement any clinical findings we get into, into the arena. And we want educators. But we want to bring them in and educate them in, in the research in women and children's health so they can take that on. So that's sort of why we've developed this new MSc. The first thing, apart from the fact that we're absolutely passionate about the problem and the, and the disease, diseases we're investigating, our students and our staff has asked, have asked us to do this MSc because we need to build up capacity. We haven't got the right people in our, in our field. We need a unique approach. We're not like other MSCs in this field because we want to integrate people. We want to attract new talents. We want to provide translational research training that fits both scientists and clinicians so that we actually impact on health outcomes. And we, more importantly, we want to equip the students that come into our MSc for careers that, regardless of what they are, because they are multivaried, that they can ultimately have an impact on the health of parents and their children. So what do we expect from people? We're, we're attracting a group of people who are all very different. So what we want is just people who are enthusiastic about women's and children's health and are willing to take the challenge of undertaking interdisciplinary learning. You may come in and learn things that you feel slightly outside your comfort zone, but everybody there will have something they specialise in or are interested in and something they don't know about. And so by bringing people together to question each other and to challenge each other, it's going to be a really creative and exciting experience. We want you to have a desire to develop your ideas, to learn and to share your thoughts. And it doesn't matter how naive they are, what questions you're asking, everything is going to help in terms of this MSc. What you, will you gain from our MSc? Well, we want to develop your research, analytical and writing skills, all transferable skills. We want to give you a learning experience that allows you to tailor your learning to what you're interested in. We want to give you some hands-on research experience and we want to give you transferable skills for a wide range of future careers. What will the course entail? Well, it's a one-year full-time course at the moment because this is the first year we're running it. And we've designed it so there are four core modules that form most of the credits for the MSc. We have the first module, Fundamentals in Women and Children's Health. That means whoever comes in, if you don't know anything about the topic, we are going to give you some lectures from international experts who are researchers in a variety of fields. We'll probably span it across 13 to 14 topics where you'll, you'll see each lecture about three times and you'll find out about normal conditions, pathophysiology, what are the clinical challenges and how can we innovate and change research for the future health of these babies and the women and their families. We understand people will come in with different skill sets, so we're running a combined scientific and clinical research skills and practice. So this is trying to equip you to make you feel comfortable to understand reading the research that might use techniques you don't understand. You may be a scientist who wants to do clinical research, so we'll train you in clinical research too. And so there'll be two streams. And as you learn those skills, you will develop what you need to do a research project. We'll have another core module, which is basic research methods, statistics and governance. And this has been running for many years as part of the paediatrics MSc, and we're joining with them for that. And then we will have a six month research project at the end, which will, again, you will be tailoring your interests all along so that you'll be able to pick a research project that really suits you. 
And this is the pathway that I've just described. I'm happy to answer questions if anybody has them. But again, what we want people to do is very early on is to find areas of interest through our lectures, what stimulates and what makes them interested. You can pick those for journal clubs. You can pick those to plan writing research proposal. You can, do, you can think about clinical trials you're interested in and what sort of patient groups you might want to attract to your clinical trial. And then you sort of weave down that pathway for yourself, your tailored learning that pops you out at the end, all prepared to do a research project in, in an area that you really want to research. And we will offer a wide span of research projects, bench, clinical, secondary data analysis, epidemiology, imaging. So these are a few examples of the project titles. We haven't run this MSc before. So these are example titles that we actually run on our intercalated BSc at the moment. Um, and also for our third year project students from biomedical sciences. And you can see here, they are of a range from the very intense in the cell, bi in cell biology to perhaps looking at um, a more qualitative um, research project. And we can offer an, a range. And if people have particular interests, we can, we can match them up with people who can offer them research projects in the area that they're interested in. We have optional modules. You'll have 30 credits of which you can choose to do an optional module depending on the timetabling. And the, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just the ones that I've picked out so far from other MSCs we're involved in. Um, and you can do 15 credit modules, two of them are 130 credit. And these are just some pictures of places that people have been on their intercalated BSCs here in South Africa teaching women how to uh, midwives how to use the cradle device which is a is a, a blood pressure machine which flags up um, set, um, high blood pressure and septic shock and this is a picture that I took in February when I was traveling around India setting up a study looking at testing for salivary progesterone as a predictor of preterm birth and I was visiting one of our new recruits from the study so who will teach you well, we've just merged women's and children's health. This is an, an array of um, people in women's health. Um, I, these, this is the core team for the core module. So it's me, Peter Dixon, who is a senior scientist, Annette Briley, who is a consultant midwife, and Paul Taylor, who is a research scientist in developmental origins of human disease. Lucilla Poston is internationally renowned. She is our head of, head of school and our head of department. Andy Shannon works in, uh, mainly in Africa and India and um, develops medical devices for hypertensive disorders. And then we have a whole host of other people here who work on a range of diseases in pregnancy. So, and then these are our paediatricians. We're just getting to know them and what they can offer us. So um, <coughs> Shane here runs the governance and statistics module and Simon runs the MSc in paediatrics. We have clinical lecturers who work in perinatal imaging. We have Louise Howard who works in um, mental health, particularly in pregnant women and links into domestic violence. We have Tim Spector who works with the twins unit, David Edwards who heads up the perinatal imaging and a whole host of other people working in paediatric allergy um, and various other diseases. And this is our little, our newest uh, join, jo team who've joined us. They're a, they're a husband and wife team who are now, who work in global health and they have l lots of projects to offer. They've just set up an eight million pound project called the Precise Network, which is setting up research studies across Africa. So that's the team. That's who you will have looking after you. And hopefully having done this MSc, that this will, will open many doors to exciting careers. Obviously, we have networks, connections, we have a vast global network, academic, clinical, commercial, um, not-for-profit agencies because of our work in global health, learned societies and charities. So we can introduce you to a lot of people. There's quite clearly a research track associated with this, PA, uh, with this MSc, but that is not the only thing we're hoping our students will come out to do. We can equip you to do research support roles, medical writing, public engagement, education, policy, scientific communications, all sorts of things this will make you equipped to undertake. Okay. So with that, I will leave it and ask for any questions.